about to open a window into the life of a ghost hunter. We'll take you down dark, creepy roads that fade into the night. We'll show you haunted locations where ghosts linger. But most importantly, we'll show you what happens on the way there. I'm Jeff and I'm Linda and here we are at a rest stop in Ruth or Glen perhaps not a hundred percent sure yeah. maybe but uh, we're on our way up to Winchester Virginia for a residential investigation of a house that the woman believes is haunted by her late husband right. uh, I don't know if we'll be able to show much details of the investigation yeah. as sometimes it is kept private but if we can we will but most importantly We'll show you what happens on the way there. Right. So, here we go, back on the road to Winchester, Virginia. So, we're driving through somewhere, Virginia. I think it's Stafford. Perhaps Stafford, yeah. near Fredericksburg, right? Yeah. And uh, some cool stuff they have around here because we saw a Weiss yeah. market, right? We saw a Wawa. We saw two Wawas within about maybe a mile of each other. Right, and we're hoping for a Sheets. Yeah, we really are. And this is a, a weird part of Virginia because these are like all Pennsylvania things. You know, it's kind of like Pennsylvania, Virginia yeah, right here. Yeah. Um, but cool true. nonetheless. Right. Uh, if we can find a Sheets though, that would be good because we need some gas uh, here yeah, pretty soon. And some grub. And some grub. And then later, perhaps some ghosts. Yes. yes. Movie title. <laughs> All right. So we found a sheets here. Somewhere and where are we? I don't know. I'm not sure either. <laughs> How much were those fries? I think they were $2.50. $2.50? Yeah. So that's $2.50 worth of fries right there. Yeah, it's a and, lot. And, uh, ooh, look at that. Chicken tenders, boneless bites with some habanero buffalo sauce. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. This eatery's a little different than some of the sheets. It is quite different, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. They got the kind of bar that wraps around the outside, you know, the perimeter of the room here. Yeah. And this, the chairs seem a little bit comfortable. They're sort of ergonomic or curved to your body. They are very ergonomic chairs. And yes. the sheets in general is a little different than some of the sheets that we've seen before. Too. It is, indeed. Now, I could be mistaken, but this looks like something new that you haven't tried before. It definitely is. Uh, this is one of their burritos, and it has um, like pulled pork kind of thing down inside it. Couple of sauces. Oh, yep. Oh. Got a little bit of everything down in there, and actually, it's quite good. Is it? Yes, quite. Now look at over here. There is a plethora of Slurpee machines. Marshmallow. That's different. Yes, it is. I don't think I've ever seen a marshmallow flavored one before. No, no, definitely not. French vanilla latte is also kind of different. Yeah. Cotton candy. Um, cotton but then they candy. have some of the normal flavors. Right. Um, I just, you know, kind of wish we had a little kid with us or something that, yeah, you know. Yeah, try some of them out. Yeah. And behind us, interestingly enough, the beer cave. I think there was one that we were in, um, maybe it was Gettysburg. I'm not 100% sure. But do you remember we walked over and they had what was actually the soda cave? 
Yeah, they did. One had that the soda was cave. Yeah, yes. and I think it was one that didn't, because here in Virginia they sell beer, mm -hmm. but at other ones they can't do that yeah. at certain locations. So right. I think they had a soda cave to kind of yeah, take its place. Take its place. Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, well, good meal here at Sheets as always. Right. Heading back on the road here after we get some gas. So one thing we've noticed that's interesting is it seems like every time we're at Sheets, the Sheets truck is here. Is it not? It is. It seems like it, yes. And there's been some weird times that we've been at Sheets, like 2 in the morning. Right, absolutely. Yeah, at the 3 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, at that one out there near, uh, what is it, Henrico or something like it's, that? It's uh, Chesterfield County. Chesterfield. Yeah. And, and the sheet truck pulls in when we're there. Right. It never seems to fail. Yeah. on EMF sweep and in the kitchen it's very high EMF not unusual high and not unusually high due to the appliances and such but it does take up a good portion of the kitchen uh, from the refrigerator here and then there's a furnace over here in the corner and then the electric box here for the EMF from all of these sinks anywhere you are in the kitchen pretty much from here back you're in a huge field hmm. see okay yeah, so we record. We uh, picked up some high EMF over here, and we weren't sure if it was coming from the bicycle because this was his bicycle. So we wanted to separate it from the wall, um, just to determine if it's coming from the wall or from the bicycle. It looks like it is coming through the wall, probably the from wall, the kitchen. From the refrigerator. From the, from the it could. Appliances. It could come from the closet too. Oh, okay. There's yeah. a lot of activity in the closet. His ashes, his ashes was in the closet. Mm. Well, no, the closet's, the closet's pretty good. Can I open this? Yeah, go ahead. It's got a lot of stuff in there. Okay. We keep it. Yeah, the emergency shutoff switch for the oil burner. Um, yeah, that could be good. That's all that's really emitting it. Uh, and something right here. Wiring? One very small spot. The thermostat's there. I don't know where that runs. It's gone. He's, it's weird, right? Hmm. He's, he's, oh, there it's back again. He's in the, he's in the closet. It could be, this metal could be. Magnetized? spike every once in a while around there. Um, it's so weird that it's intermittent. Coming, down, uh, coming across the top here and coming down. Would, Can you see? It will definitely, that wire should definitely give it off. Yeah. You know? But it's not. No. It's a, so it's I not like, that wire. It's, 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 not a, it's not a tip. I guess that wire is pretty well insulated. Yeah. Why it was going off there, but I can see the sound of the lights are plugged in. There's still power going through that. Yeah. We can see the look here on Triple H's face. It's unusually angry. And uh, it's not normally it's not normally like that. No. Right? He's not normal like that. Interesting. Yes. So with the EMF sweep I switched to the ghost meter. Mm -hmm. Um which is the cheaper one, but I just wasn't sure about this one because it was starting to sound a little funny. Yes. Now it sounded normal. Right. But it, it was sounding a little weird. It did. Um, at first. Did you get anything in the pictures? No, not in first glance. Okay. Did you see anything weird in the pictures? Any of the pictures that you took or anything like that? Not so far. Okay. In the master bedroom. Okay. And I have this um, Paratech app going in the background here to see if there's any interesting results with it that may coincide with the spirit box that Linda's going to start here. 
And uh, so far well, we have the word adjective. Knows. We'd like to be able to use this device to communicate with you, to talk to you. We don't mean you any harm. We simply want to find out why you're here. Is there anyone here with us? Could you please tell us your name? that it wasn't a DJ either. Yeah. We may not have caught your name. If you said your name, can you say it to us again? Uh, is David. Is David, is that his name? David, tell me why you stay here in this house. Why are you here? It says remain. Interesting, huh? Why do you wish to remain? So I've got the word bath on the Paratech app. And, uh... Just coming in here, just in case that was any indicator to come in here. And now it says carry on or rock. I don't even know what that word is. Or rock. But uh, is there anybody here in the bathroom? If there is. Let me know. Can you tell me who's in here? Gosh. We also have this little black box here on the edge of the dresser, and it can record your voice. So if you can speak well, to that's that, strange. you may be able to listen to it later. This just powered off. The battery's completely dead, but I'm going to have to refer to the earlier video to see how low it was. To try a flashlight session. And with these flashlights, uh, we want to make sure we establish positive communication because we know they will come on at random. So I want to make sure we establish that positive communication uh, before we consider any of it as evidence. So we'd like to know um, if you could start by turning on the red flashlight. That's the one to the left of the TV. Can you turn on the red flashlight for us, please? We want to see if you can turn on the red flashlight. That's the one on the right of the TV. Uh, it's the left of the TV if we're facing it. next one over. Can you turn on that flashlight for us, please? He's, he's, uh, That's <laughs> now he's over there, the lights risk, uh, over there about on the steps. I can see. Linda, that's what I'm thinking. Maybe since I set that red flashlight and it's the only one that hasn't come on yet. Yeah. I'm um, gonna try reset. By natural or unnatural causes. Maybe you might want to try setting that. Okay. So you maybe you can set it similar to how you set the other two. Well, I just barely touched it and it came on, so. Yeah. Oh, this must uh, see. Can you turn all of the flashlights off for us? Thank you. Thank you. That's my son. Okay. Okay, could you try turning on the red flashlight now? That is the red one, right, Linda? If we're facing the TV on the left side of it? Yes. Okay. Should you turn on the red one? If you could turn off the silver one and just turn on the red flashlight, please. 
we want to say a succession of uh, colors and see if you can turn the flashlights on in that order just so that we know you can do it um, and are able to use those to communicate. There's the red one. All right, thank you. Could you turn that one off for us, please? We're gonna ask you to turn on another one. I want you to turn that one off and please turn on the blue one over here on this table with the lamp. Flashlight that's on the table with the lamp. Could you turn that one on for us, please? Just to make sure, could you please turn on the silver one, then the red one, then the silver one again. The silver one, thank you. The red one, if you turn that one off and turn the red one on, and then turn on the silver one again for us, please. <laughs> so we uh, wrapped up our investigation. Um, inside the house here we did it we did an EVP session in the bedroom then we came downstairs after the flashlight session we did an EVP session we did a spirit box session and during the EVP session I actually sat outside and took note of any of the noises so um, they won't fully contaminate our recording because there was a lot of noises that you could hear from outside anything interesting on your behalf um, nothing really worth noting um... The flashlights did a lot of blinking, some of which was fairly circumstantial. Yes, um, yes. So I guess when we go back over it, we'll see whether any of it was worth taking note of or whether it's all dismissible. Yeah, and I was starting on the flashlights because it was kind of at first, it turned on the red one, and then it turned on the silver one, and then it turned back on the red one again, or vice versa, I figured exactly the order I asked. But then it started the blue one would come on every so often and then the silver one would come on every so often and it's just I'm not sold on the flashlights I'm not sold that they're working at all and I know that I know that they're gonna come on and off at random um, but we do try to establish that link first and I don't think we fully had it established definitely not so I have to agree with Jeff um, I kind of wondered at one point if perhaps we had too many flashlights in the mix sometimes I think just two um, one for yes one for no uh, so that there's really a lot less um, confusion um, and, and, and more of a, a, a chance for us to be able to, to see if something is communicating without having this one other third random flashlight coming on and off and on and off. So um, kind of wondered about that. But again, you know, even with just two flashlights, we're not totally convinced that the flashlights work. We have to have a pretty definitive um, answer with, through the flashlights too to say yes, okay, something's trying to communicate through them. Now look at what we found here. Martin's Funnel Chips. It's funnel cake flavored potato chips. Those look really good. They do, they do. We've been seeing a lot of Martin's lately. Maybe they're we expanding have. a little bit. Could be. I don't know, but I think we're gonna have to pick up a bag of these yeah. and try them out. We'll see how they go with coffee. Well, we uh, wandered over to a local Sheets here in Winchester. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, as you saw inside, we found some Martin's funnel cake flavored potato chips, which we picked up. And we're gonna sit here and eat those and have some coffee. Yes. And uh, well, we might save those for later, I don't know. But what we're gonna do now is we're going to get online, do a little bit of research. And since we're all the way up here in Winchester, we wanna see if there's perhaps some sort of an urban legend right. that we can check out before we leave. Yep. So let's see what we can find here. Or any kind of outdoor haunted location. Any kind of haunted deal. location. Yeah. yeah, give me a haunted town to walk through or yes, something. Yes, exactly. Let's check it out. So we wandered down to Old Town Winchester, downtown Winchester. I'm not sure which it would be referred to as. And I managed to park the car uh, parallel. And I had some quarters for the meter. Uh, so we're, we're in luck tonight. Now there's a couple, there's actually a lot of ghost stories down here. But we're going to explore a couple of them and we have to walk to our destination from here. So let's start uh, moseying up the street here, away from the local bar crowd, and we'll tell you what we find as we go along here. We'll tell you the story as we go along. Well, the first street that we came across, without even knowing we were coming up on it, is actually Indian Alley. 
and Indian Alley has its own urban legends. Uh, apparently, stories back from the 1800s said that there were really tall Native Americans that lived in this area uh, back before it was inhabited by the white man. Now, according to legend, ghosts, shadows of these tall Native Americans have been seen walking down this alley. So, I brought an EMF detector, and of course we're going to take some pictures, and we're going to see if there's any unusual spikes. And meanwhile in the distance, someone is yelling for help. So let's go this way. So we're not exactly sure where on the street uh, these Indians are supposed to be seen, but we're just going to walk down the street a little ways and um, just get a feel for it and see if we can uh, find any Native Americans wandering around. <laughs> EMF detector out. And this looks perfectly natural um, to people walking down an alley with an EMF detector out. This is something that we do and <laughs> people are somewhat accepting of it, I'm sure. <laughs> so sometimes um, it does pay to do these investigations. Yeah, that came from the ground. Yes. All right, Ten onward, bucks. onward. That's gonna be our sheets later on. Yes. Now there's a, there's a spike. I heard it right here. But of course it could be natural things in the environment that would cause us off to go off. Right. There are power lines up above us. Mm -hmm. uh, we got another spike back there by one of the buildings. Yes. But I'm not gonna jump to the conclusion that it's um, because of the tall Native American spirits. Yes, and we do have um, quite a few lanterns up above us and power lines, things of that nature. So, um, you know, it's likely that we are going to get some random spikes here, which will make it a little bit difficult to uh, determine if it's paranormal or not. Right, absolutely. Well, we made it down to the end of Indian Alley, and here's something that's somewhat interesting the Shenandoah Valley Discovery Museum. Guess those lights go all night. Thought it was a cop coming. Yeah, I did too. But I guess we can wander on back down here and I hear the church bells ringing in the distance. Right. It's kind of cool. Uh, when we went down to Indian Alley, the Corkscrew... Cork Street. Cork Street. Yeah. Uh, tavern was down there and, and that's also rumored to be haunted. Yes. But uh, not something we're really going to explore today. Uh, we're standing here by this building and of course, uh, I guess I got to tilt this down here, maybe it was going off. Now every time yeah. I try to get on video it's not, there it is. There we go. Okay. Now as we're walking down here, um, this was fairly uh, steadily in the yellow I should yeah. say. Uh, it was in the yellow for most of the way, it was blinking red a lot of the way. Right. And uh, I do got to point out one interesting thing. With the high levels, or the fairly high levels of, yes, of EMF, EMF that are here in Indian Alley, yes, um, it is a perfect place for a spirit to manifest. Absolutely, uh, yeah. It is believed that spirits can use these uh, fields mm -hmm. to help them manifest. So it could explain some of the paranormal activity down here. Yeah. If not the fact that it's getting to people that are spending a lot of time here, maybe working in establishments and kind of causing right. them to maybe hallucinate or yeah, yeah, uh, you depending never know. on how high the levels are in the buildings and how long they're exposed to it. Right. Or on the other hand, it could provide us all you can eat buffet to these spirits. Yeah. So I don't know, but we're going to head down Indian Alley here a little further uh, back in the direction we came from and see what else we can find down here in Winchester. Right now we're going down Loudon Street. Mm -hmm. I believe that's how it's pronounced. South Loudon Street. South yes. Loudon Street. And there's a building down here where the ghost of Tilly Russell has been seen. And this mm -hmm. is a ghost that comes rushing out of the house, throwing a shawl over her shoulders, and she's dressed in Civil War attire. Um, during 1864, during the Civil War, there was a skirmish nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe it was on Rutherford's farm. Yes. And there was a captain who was severely wounded. His name was Captain Ridgely. And Tilly Russell found him and he was found the next morning cradled in her arms. She nursed him through the night. He survived his wounds. And it's said that her spirit still rushes out of the house every night 
down towards the farm where the battle was to take care of Captain Ridgely. Huh, okay. So we're going to be on the lookout for this young woman as we go along South Loudon Street here. And here we are at the old courthouse on Loudon Street and they have a monument here to every Confederate soldier from Winchester and Frederick County who faithfully served the South. And there's the old courthouse from 1840 behind it there. Yes. And I believe, if my memory serves me right when we're doing the research, that that uh, courthouse is also haunted. Yes. I forget the exact details, but that's another thing we'll have to look into. Right. But look at this building over here, the 1870 Union Bank. Wow, that's a cool building. And it's a neat old street here, isn't it? Can you see that clock up there, Chris? Yes. Oh, wow. Look at that. That's cool. Yep. Now, I gotta say, this looks like a cool store, uh, mainly because it's got an alien head, of course, in between flying objects. But then, if we come down a little bit, there's like a giant slimer in the window. How cool is that? What'd you find? Mountain trails. Yeah, yeah, it's just kind of. Oh cool. man. Mountain trails store. Yeah, it's got all kinds of cool looking stuff inside there, and I really wish I could go in. I wish it was open. Yeah, the one downside about ghost hunting is nothing's open except for Walmart and Sheets, right. which are good. Yeah, but that's still good. Sheets more than Walmart, but yeah. nonetheless, uh, heading on down Loudon Street here, and just look at these old buildings. This building right here has got to be old, too. I mean, they're all, that's a Masonic temple, mm -hmm. actually. They're all very, very old. Look like, I feel like I'm walking back in time, almost, aside from the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, the building that we just panned over here is actually this building right here. All right, mm -hmm. and it, apparently it was used as a hospital yes. during the Civil War, packed with Confederate soldiers. Right, and then and then the Union, and then the Union. Yes, and it says that in May of 1863, the Union General Robert Milroy ordered that repairs be done to the hotel by the soldiers and under his command, uh, because evidently they had damaged the hotel while they were here. So at least he was kind enough to go back and try to repair it. That's awesome. And yes. I'm willing to bet that this place as well probably has a few ghost stores attached to it. Oh yeah, I would, I would think so. Um, another interesting point about this hotel is that um, Stonewall Jackson um, used it as his headquarters in November of 1861, but wow. he was so inundated with people throngs of people that were coming to meet him when they found out he was staying here that he had to retreat and go to another place to stay uh, because I guess he just couldn't get the rest he needed. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So it turned out that we were uh, kind of walking in the opposite direction. We must have passed it a little ways down the street here. So. We're gonna go back towards the old courthouse and see if we can locate uh, the exact address of what we're looking for here. Right. I don't know what's going on with this GPS, like it showed us walking in that direction, but I guess it didn't turn or something. I don't yeah, know. I don't know. But better for driving than for walking, perhaps. Right. So luckily Google Maps was able to help us because this address is nowhere to be found. And it's either one of these two buildings, most likely, because Google Maps has shown it as the next building down from the El Centro Mexican restaurant, and it's also shown it across from the Feltner Community Center. Right, right, right which, which is, is right, right here. behind us here. Um, it's this building right here. So, if we plot in one of these spots over here, we can see the doors of both of these buildings here. Yeah. Now, luckily, we got a nice little um, little seat here. Seat here, kind of. Yes. It's like a tree thing, the things that they plant trees in. Right, right. And it's right outside of both of these buildings. 
uh, so we wouldn't be able to miss anything that comes out. And I think we're going to do a little stake out here. Not a whole lot we can do. Right. Um, you know, with the natural electricity from the street lamps and the buildings and everything else, EMF could definitely be a false positive. Right, right. There's nothing we can do as far as an EVP session because, for one, this at this time is not conducive to an EVP session. No, There's a lot of people, people walking around still. Furthermore, we haven't heard any reports of her actually making any sound. Mm -hmm. People just see this Civil War era woman running out of the building in a hurry throwing a shawl over, over her shoulders, shoulder, right? right? Um, Tilly Russell. So, let's see what we see while we're sitting here. It's about all we can do. Why do you say that? Well, because it's obvious that this is a residual haunting. And residual hauntings often, I believe, occur only when certain conditions are the same as what they were back at that time that the action actually occurred. Right. So we have no idea of knowing what these conditions were. Um, was it cold? Was it hot? Was it humid? Um, you know, it's there's just no way to tell. No way to tell. So we could sit here for a year and perhaps never see this lady. Yeah, that's definitely an interesting concept, and uh, it brings to mind a couple questions. For one, do residual hauntings occur when the atmosphere is the same uh, as when the incident happened? Right. Or do they occur when something is right in the atmosphere that allows them to manifest? Right. So perhaps there's a theory that maybe it's not necessarily that there are um, the same circumstances happening right now that happened, you know, 150 years ago, but on certain nights when the weather is just right, right, when the humidity is just right, the temperature is just right, the certain things in the atmosphere that allow this residual haunting to manifest, yes. at times like that, perhaps she manifests. Right. Now, another problem that comes about is in the report that we read um, about Tilly Russell, it doesn't specify when she's seen. It doesn't say she's seen on right. rainy nights. It doesn't say she's seen on summer nights, winter nights, anything like that. Yeah, or any particular date of the year. Yes. Right. It just says that she's been seen. Mm -hmm. So my guess is that passerby have seen this woman and, yeah. and this oddly, um, you know, odd costume, odd yeah. costume and a costume from a time period long ago. They've seen her running out of this door. And so many people have seen it that they have brought it to the attention of right. whoever yes. that found the story and posted yeah. it. I don't know. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the thing is, I would think that if she is seen a lot or if she has been seen, we don't know what the conditions are. So there, is there right. a chance? Yes. Um, it depends on how frequent it is. And once again, yeah. the report doesn't give how frequent it is either. Right. So... Who knows? You could hit that stroke of luck where you're sitting here and it happens where you're sitting here. Right. Or it could be one of those things that only happens once in a while. And yeah. the amount of people, it's a heavily traveled street. It is. You know? It is. So the amount of people that come down here, it's likely if it's haunted, someone is going to experience something oh, at yeah, some point. Absolutely. You yes. know, as opposed to a street where only, you know, it's a lot yes. less traveled. True. Right? So a heavily traveled street like this, someone's going to see it. Yeah. Now, when you take into consideration all the people that are coming down the street and the amount of time she's been seen, yeah, yeah, then your chances might be a little slimmer. Right. Too. Right. So, I don't know. Well, we're walking back, and I gotta say, there's a big old church behind us here. See that church? Mm -hmm. There's a church that has a ghost story as well, where people have seen Civil War soldiers, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure if that's exactly the same church. Right. Um, it could be. It could be, but perhaps that's a mission for another time. Right. Uh, when we're down here. Yeah, when we have a few more quarters for parking. Yes, because three only take you an hour. Yeah. And uh, that may be very well up. A, I'm not sure. Yeah. So we're going to have to venture on back to the car here. But uh, I got to say, um, definitely an interesting place down here. Wouldn't you yeah, say so? Absolutely. 
Yeah, very quaint. Um, you can tell that all of the buildings have a lot of um, character to the architecture, mm -hmm. a lot of history um, to them. Very old buildings and um, just made to look new and now a lot of um, little kind of creative artsy fartsy kind of businesses right. occupy these places and so it's it is a very nice area absolutely I've never seen here yeah. before. Look at these nut fries and cheddar fries, how big they are. I know. I'm gonna pick one of those up so we can get a yeah. size comparison here. Yeah. Okay. We'll have one of those. Look at the combos as well. We got yeah. combos in big bags too. Yeah, That's a big, big bag of hot fries. It is, it really is. Isn't that yeah. crazy? Yeah, enough to give you a heart attack, I'm thinking. Like artery clogging sort yeah. of food. That's what I'm yeah. About. yeah, that's artery clogging size is what they should have put at the yeah. top of the bag. Like some artery clogging Yeah. Sure enough, on the way back, we found a sheet mm -hmm. here and somewhere off of after 66 and after 17, yes. around 15. 15, and the juncture of 66 and 15. 17, and 15, 15, something like that. Or something like that. But uh, you got something new or not? I did. I got something really? new this time. Thank well, you. let me change the angle on this camera so we can get a good zoom on it. Yes. What is that? Well, I forget what they call it, but it's like a twisted BLT kind of thing. It's supposed to be a breakfast sandwich, but I'm not sure what makes it really a breakfast sandwich, except for the, the fact bacon. that it has like squished tops and, and bacon. Brands. Right, right. And this lovely slice of onion on Did here. Did you customize I that at all? Or is that I how didn't. That comes? This is just how it comes. What is that so, called? Like I said, I don't know. Twisted BLT or something? Twisted BLT? Yeah, yeah. It was one of the, um, there's like signature recipes under the breakfast menu. So, oh, and a nice brioche bun. Ah, the brioche. Brioche. <laughs> I like that. Man, that looks good. Yes. Well, I too got something I haven't had before. Uh, last time I had something called the quesarito. This time I got the burrito. And uh, I forget what I got in it. Jalapenos oh. and, I don't know, some other stuff. But let me try to take a bite of it. <laughs> mm. I have to say I'm quite stuffed yes. uh, from that sheets meal, courtesy yeah. of the ten dollars that we found on the ground yeah. uh, in Winchester. Yep. So, good stuff. Now, uh, we did sit outside of that building for a while. I'm not sure if we talked about it while we were there, but we didn't see anything. No. Um, you never know. Sometimes you can catch a glimpse of something, sometimes you can't. Right. You know, we, we discuss the odds of seeing something. But uh, we're going to get back on the road here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm not sure where the night's going to lead from here. Probably oh. home. Right. But between here and there, it's quite a way. <laughs> it's still about three hours or That's something true, like that. Yeah. So yeah. maybe two and a half. So we'll see what happens. must remain on a leash, use doggy bags, and dispose in trash cans. That would take one smart dog. <laughs> 